Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Jimmy Novel. This edition Stop Stories. The HIA Redevelopment Project gains momentum. Export St. Lucia encourages the local use of sun dried sea moss. And St. Lucia joined the global community celebrating World Oceans Day. The Hiranora International Airport Redevelopment Project is gaining momentum as work on the project heightens. The project will not only provide a state-of-the-art facility upon completion, but will offer a number of employment opportunities during the construction phase. We get details in this report. The St. Lucia Air and Seaports Authority, SLASPA, expressed confidence that upon completion, the Hiranora International Airport HIA redevelopment project will meet the demands of the aviation industry and rival neighboring Caribbean islands as one of the best airports in the region. Officials of the Ministry of Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labor, along with Infrastructure Minister Honorable Stevenson King, recently made their first official visit to the site. The visit provided them an opportunity to witness firsthand the progress of works being conducted. SLASMA's Communications and Community Liaison Officer for the HIA Redevelopment Project, Peter Lewis, explained that the officials were also profited the opportunity to make inquiries and witness the quality of the product in the foundation stage. To be able to, to walk the minister through, for him to get an appreciation for the piling process, how far we've progressed in terms of how that affects the timeline and the timely completion of the project, the fact that we've taken the environmental concerns into consideration to, to enact this project and to ensure that it is completed um, the way that we as St. Lucians and the wider world would be proud of. Um, also, the minister got a chance to ask questions firsthand uh, from the project site engineers and to, to witness uh, the true progress of, of, of the facility. And I think the minister left uh, very pleased and he was very happy. Um, but also for, for officials of the Ministry of Infrastructure, they were able to get a grasp of the full extent of what partners like CBRE, HERI and ECMC, who are also partners on this project, are doing and uh, to get uh, an appreciation for the sheer expanse and effort that it is going to take to realize this project. The communications and community liaison officer indicated that the airport project will meet international standards whilst providing all required amenities for a safe and comfortable experience. The airport project is on the way and St. Lucia will soon be able to, to experience the, all the, the trappings and and thrills of a, a new state-of-the-art facility and um, everyone is committed and excited to push the project through and so soon from now all of us will be able to experience greater parking accommodation and um, Wi-Fi and all the, the little things that we want more space more technology involved cute systems and and state-of-the-art technology throughout a facility which is modern and and to allow us to rank amongst the best in the region. Minister for Infrastructure, Ports, Energy and Labour, Honorable Stevenson King, highlighting the quality of the works being executed, expressed elation at the progress thus far. He explained that significant progress is being made and with the noted improvement in efficiency, the project may outperform the expected completion time. We also realize that in the five packages, uh, the first package which is being done, it's on time. And once it's on time, then it means the next set of packages from the pile driving to the shell package, to the interior, to the air side, land side. Um, we are hoping that St. Lucians won't be disappointed, not only in the architecture and the environment that has been put together, but in terms of the, the delivery so that St. Lucia now can boast of having an international airport that is second to none in the entire Caribbean. The minister commending all involved parties stated that he is proud of and impressed with the work being conducted as well as the competency of SLASPA. Honorable King also stated that the project is beneficial on many fronts, providing employment opportunities for residents of the South. Already, the, the numbers that are being counted here, the OECC Meridian has about 150 to 160 workers that they've employed. 
uh, we are anticipating that we'll see an increase in numbers as they continue to do their part of the job. OECS, o, OECC has about 30 to 40 in number. So we're really speaking about 200 workers at this time. But of course, the, it's really the, the spill off in terms of what is happening on the periphery of the, of the construction site in terms of catering and um, um, food. Uh, other services beyond that, you know, accommodation and and the, the list continues. Uh, we will see certainly an improvement in, in the numbers when the other phases of the project commences and hopefully the anticipated or projected numbers that have been uh, spoken of is anything near to 550, 600 persons being engaged during the construction phase. Beyond that, the other things will happen. The official site visit was conducted on the 10th of June, 2021. St. Lucia's sun-dried CMOS is undergoing a major branding and packaging change, spearheaded by Export St. Lucia. The Taste of St. Lucia's CMOS brand features a special collection of premium food, beverage and wellness products for those who want a taste of the island life. Noting that many are aware of the raw product with no clue as to how to prepare it, Export St. Lucia has embarked on a five-episode production geared towards encouraging the local use of CMOS and showcasing the variety of ways in which it can be prepared for consumption. Today we take a look at episode one of the production, CMOS made by Export St. Lucia. Hi and welcome to CMOS Made. We are here in beautiful Sufre. All right, we are at uh, the Crystals Hotel, just below the Pitos. The Pitos are right there, right there, left the Pitos there. And um, we're here to learn about CMOS. Let's be honest. A lot of us we've gone to the supermarket and we've gotten this. All right, we've gotten CMOS, and that's just step one. And we've never gotten to step two. What do you do with the CMOS after you've gotten it? Now we know CMOS is the craze. Everybody's into CMOS. It tastes good. It has a lot of um, natural health benefits. We know that CMOS um, has 92 out of the 102 minerals found in the body. All in that. I tell you that. And um, it's also good for the um, natural, you know, sexual health. You understand that the reproductive organs, you know, the little soldiers matching. It's good for that as well. I know you all know that one for sure. I am here with um, Miss Vanetta from Sunshine Delights. And um, Vanetta, I went to the supermarket, I got CMOS. And people like you, that's what you're here for, to tell me what am I going to do with this. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make the gel, mm -hmm. which you could use to make smoothies, yes. your stews, and, and smoothies and all of the things with it. All okay? Right. Yes. So first, mm -hmm. you take your CMOS out of the packet, this, and you put it in some water. Oh, just like that. You submerge it into the water. So that you soak in it? Yes, you soak it. It has to soak for 12 to 24 hours and you also use some citrus skin to take off the freshness ah. out of it. Yes, so you see what's I happening. I the simos just like that, no freshness, everything is alright. Well, it would be salty. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes. Don't put your simos without putting the little citrus, alright? Make sure you have the citrus in it. And you have to soak it. Okay, soak it good? Soak it good. 12 hours, you say? 12 to 24 hours, at Ooh. least, yes. That's, that's a lot yes. of hours, eh? Yes, so right. after this is done, this is the CMOS after it's soaked for 20, 12 to 24 hours. All right. Yes, so this, this is it. So over on this side, we have some spices. Oh, spices boiling. Yes, Cup spices boiling. We have some cinnamon, nutmeg, mm -hmm. and some bay leaf and some star anise. So that's it right there, and a little sugar to sweeten it up. Nice. Yes. All right. So after this is boiled, we have to strain it. After you strain it off, you add it back to your pot, and then you add the simos that has been soaking for 12 to 24 hours. Yes. Bring it to the front. Bring it to the front. What you do, you just simply take your simos mm -hmm. and you you add it to it. So do you have to let it soak after you add yes, it? Yes, you let it soak for five to ten minutes. So it takes up all the flavor. Yes. That's how you do it. Yes, that's how you do it. So it's not just as simple as getting the simos. And no, you, you need no. to get the flavor in there, so you yes. make sure that you have all your spices. And well ensure well. you remove the lime skin. Next thing you make um, lemon tea. 
How long do you have to let the simo soak in the um, spices? Five to ten minutes, and you're good. Oh. Yep. So the first one is twelve to twenty-four hours. And yes. This one is five to ten minutes. Your end result. This is it. That's the simos gel. Yes, that's the simos gel. So to create the simos gel, you have to soak the simos in the spices and just let it soak for five to ten minutes. Yes, and you could refrigerate it afterwards and use it. All right, and then what? You do could we... freeze it as well. All right, what do we do with the simos gel after that? You blend it up. All right, and that's the uh, first step. Yes. To so... our simos. the gel guys make sure you scoop the gel and put the gel in a blender and just like that and then you get a smooth piece Okay. That's what you get. So, I have a question. Is that ready for consuming one time? Yes, it is. Add some more sugar to it? If you like, depending on your sweetness, you could add sugar or honey to it. Okay, and yes. if I want to add things like milk to it, do I have to add milk to the blender or? To the blender. All right, and blend it together. Yes. Okay. So, this is it for the gel. And of course, that's how we do it, okay? So, it's very simple. You take your CMOS, you soak your CMOS for 12 to 24 hours. You have to add your citrus. Uh, to make sure that you know you cut the fresh i'm doing right eh? yes you All are right. then you boil your spices your traditional spices and then you take your simos and you soak your simos in the spices for five to ten minutes and that's how you form the gel you take your gel after that you blend your gel yes. and you're gonna have sugar in your spices as well but you can add some more sugar afterwards you can add your milk and um, that's how you get your simos so that's it for simos made and there's so much more you can do with simos so of course Benita, that's why you're here? Yes. You're gonna show us uh, what else we can do with lovely Simos. Yes, I will. All right. Episodes of Simos made by Export St. Lucia will be aired on the National Television Network, NTN, every Sunday at 6 p.m. St. Lucia and other members of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS, join the rest of the world in celebrating World Oceans Day. Celebrated annually on the 8th of June, the day is geared towards reiterating the major role oceans have in everyday life. The Ocean Life and Livelihoods is this year's theme for World Oceans Day, as well as a declaration of intentions that launches a decade of challenges to get the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 14, conserve and sustainably use the oceans, seas and marine resources by 2030. This year marks the beginning of the UN Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development 2021 to 2030. The decade will provide a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to strengthen the international cooperation needed to develop the scientific research and innovative technologies that can connect ocean science with the needs of society. CARICOM Secretariat's Renewable Energy Generation Project recommences. We get the details from CARICOM News Times to Sanking English Francis. A Japan Grant A project, which is expected to power the CARICOM Secretariat through renewable energy, has restarted after COVID-19 protocols halted operations in April 2020. Launched in January 2020, the project was moving apace when the coronavirus pandemic struck. It is part of a wider initiative called the Introduction of Renewable Energy and Energy Conservation in Guyana and CARICOM financed by the government of Japan. The project includes the installation of 400 kilowatts of solar photovoltaic power generator to provide electricity to the CARICOM Secretariat's building, a battery and power conditioning system for energy storage and power quality regulation. It also includes an advanced building energy management system to provide air conditioning controls, track energy efficiency, and indoor air quality. The project design is linked to the CARICOM energy policy and the regional strategy for sustainable energy. We spoke with the CARICOM Deputy Secretary General, Ambassador Manoma Suknandan, who has oversight of the project. While we had stopped working on the ground, 
our meetings continued. And we've had frequent, regular meetings. And uh, those meetings actually were about to assess the situation. That's one. But two, also to convince our counterparts to come back and that it is safe to come back. And in that, we have uh, received a lot of support, assistance from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, but also from the Ministry of Health and the Chief Medical uh, uh, Officer here in Guyana. Without them, you would not be seeing these activities today. CARICOM's Deputy Secretary General, Dr. Manoma Suknandan, speaking there. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. With all that's happening around us, simple adjustments are necessary to keep us all safe. When calling 911, we may need a little more information to deploy the right personnel and protocols. You may be asked about your travel history, signs and symptoms, contact and movement history, and whether others in your household are exhibiting similar symptoms. Please, be patient and cooperative during this time to ensure you receive the best possible care while keeping our first responders safe. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Monsieur, Madame, Department of Responsibility for Information and Government Service, that's the GIS, that's the Pi Television National Pi NTN, that was the Nouvelle Aquayol, was the Primus Hutchinson. Bureau of Service, that was the Responsibility for the Information and Government Service, that's the GIS. Toujours à des conditions qui s'en sortent, ça qui connaît aussi comme SLBS. J'ai appris que l'année opération Bobol, côté certains monde qui engagé à business, qui servi marque officielle bio, à ce document qui est présenté, les qui ont acheté article à l'autre pays pour vendre à cette liste. Marc Salahod bio SLBS, c'est un qui a à ce produit pour montrer que ce produit ça la suit toutes règles de bonne qualité, pays régional et aussi international. Mark là aussi, quand vous trouvez place là, qui a été la sortie, c'est un, un système de management à bonne qualité et qui a opéré effectivement. SLBS a fait comprendre que Mark Sala, ce n'est pas une licence pour faciliter la transférence pour lui rendre une place business pour une autre et pas qu'à replacer ces règlements qui a gouverné l'opération Sala. SLBS a fait public la savent qui et contre le droit cette ci pour n'importe monde qui servit Mac Bureau pour pièce cause et c'est bureau seulement qui a droit servir Mac ça là alors il c'est une offense et n'importe monde qui coupable qui ne peut pas être devant qui l'audience paya n'importe monde qui loi joine coupable pour offense ça là qui trouver condamné 10000 dollars et à part de ça qui ne peut payer 1000 dollars en plus pour chaque jour vous répétez au France là. Eh bien, aussi, vous s'est trouvé condamné à prison pour six mois. Puis, vous avez vu les rivières et l'autre qui a acheté pour lui l'autre pays pour vendre en cette liste, pour perdre vieux l'habitude de cela et pour ne pas accepter le document qu'il faut à trois actions business et que vous avez fait plein de situations pour SLBS là. Ministre qui n'a pas de responsabilité pour faire construction et travaux, c'est l'honorable Stevenson King, et l'autre gros officier, qui a visité ma pipi projet pour lui bâtir l'aéroport de Honora en Vieux-Fort. Ces officiers sont depuis les Grecs, la SPA, et délégation, compagnie qui a bâti l'aéroport, qui a visité ce travail qui a fait et pour qui a été gré pour gré l'aéroport de Jarrivé. Officier qui est responsable pour la communication et pour aujourd'hui une bonne coopération avec le groupe de Jésala, à l'époque de Honora, M. Peter Lewis a expliqué qu'un peu de monde a appris à faire le projet de Jésala fini et le travail qu'il a fait sérieusement pour faire ça en réalité. Le marché, le ministre a été en chance pour apprécier les affaires de tous les ingénieurs, les compagnies, les affaires de CBR, Hiri, CEO Williams, tout ce qui a poussé le projet à devant et nous avons nos stages fondation même um, fondation qui a eu plus de 3000 piles 
qui a descendu pour faire fondation et que ça a assuré dat dat ça fait ça qui a eu une chance pour ça même si l'année qu'on l'a pli vous savez de pas y avoir de l'eau là aussi nous avons fait dat table terre place là pas pas écrasé Monsieur Luce déclaré que cela se passe avec l'autre agence qui travaille web pour équipe au Jésus Allah finir à d'ailleurs dégoué qui tue avancé. Cela se passe avec tous les partenaires qui ont poussé pour assurer dat cette liste qui est née à l'époque qui tout neuf et tout le monde l'a eu entouré et l'a eu sorti, il y a eu un bon en bonne santé et qui a créé l'idée qui a dit que cette liste qui a poussé devant et toutes les affaires nous les affaires tourisme les affaires trade toutes les affaires qui marchent bien on a appris Stephen King très plein et puis pour gué qui j'ai fait qui j'ai ouais et qui a pris qui plus que 167 lycéens employés par des compagnies même ni 40 employés et composé à qui avancer la qui n'est encore plus cette liste pour trouver employement à peu près 60 officiers publics à cette liste fini premier en trois études pour y apprendre à parler et à marcher en langage chinois. Et que si vous suivez un certificat pour finir le programme là complètement, le programme là a duré pour 12 semaines et que en bas de la conduite Mamzel Ting Ting Lu, ambassade de la République Chine à Taïwan, en collaboration avec le département des services publics. Le programme là, c'est pour assister les gens qui ne parlent jamais le langage là avant pour aider eux et puis habiliter des communications à langage chinois. Devant ce moment-là, pour te marcher, finissement, le programme là, et tout le monde, c'est participer, montrer la capacité pour servir le langage là et faire ça en façon que tu causes et puis on a l'autre. C'est que le programme dans le département de services publics, Mamzel Peggy Anne Soudat, complimenter ces participants pour embrasser l'occasion pour apprendre l'autre langage. Il dit que ça a ouvert l'autre chemin pour faire connexion et puis le reste de la terre. Ambassade Taiwan pour cette liste, Peter Chen, tu es très et puis participation ces officiers publics cette liste pour passer bon l'intérêt à des langages neufs. Programme des entraînements pour apprendre à parler le langage chinois qui a continué pour la deuxième phase là, et pour côté ces 60 participants pour continuer pendant l'autre 40 qui a commencé la première phase là. Et c'est comme ça nous avons une nouvelle là. Je vous remercie autant pour vous regarder. Je vous remercie l'invitation. Je ne peux pas encore. Si tu es conservé la vie, tu n'as pas besoin de voir l'autre nouvelle. En quoi est-ce que tu es là? Je vous remercie de vous présenter. Merci à Pearl Primus. And that brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norvell.